So I got the spice rack uh, a couple weeks ago. I got it for 20 bucks. It's got the original box and everything. It's got like a little instructional guide. It actually hangs um, upside down. Actually, no, wait, no, it doesn't. It hangs like this. And then you, uh, you like hang it into a cabinet. It's got like the hardware and everything. But I could not, I mean, I searched everywhere. I searched eBay, EarthPoint, Google. I did a lot of different searches for like Spice Master Rack. Um, this company, I couldn't find anything out about this company. Um, so finally, I see the patent number here, and I decided to do a patent search. So I searched, I put that number in, and it came up with October 10th, 1950. So at least now I've got some time, you know, like a frame for it of when it was made. Pretty cool. They've got the original uh, patent that was designed for this thing, like all of the schematics. WJ Gaiman, there it is. So I guess they didn't have a whole lot of success because I can't really find much else. So look at this, it was filed in 1947 and it took until October 10th, 1950 to get it, so three years. Pretty wild, so I'm gonna just price this thing really high since I've got the box and everything and see what happens. Shipping a few things out this morning and I sold this voice synthesizer skull. Got it at a yard sale a couple weeks ago for $7, $8, something like that. And I listed it for $80, your best offer. Somebody just sent me an offer of $50. And I went and took it because Halloween's only a few weeks away. So I worry that if I have it past Halloween, I'll have to hang on to it for like another 10, 11 months. So I just went ahead and took it. I picked up these uh, inline hockey skates, gosh, about a month or two ago. And they've just been sitting in my storage. I'm finally getting around to listing them. Um, I don't think I've ever found a pair of these and talked about them on my channel. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit about inline hockey skates. Um, typically, inline hockey skates will sell better for you than just regular inline roller blades. Uh, because, for one, they're more expensive new. And I think there's a bigger market for them. Just because there's you know a lot of people that play inline hockey. And there's a couple signs for you to look for to tell the difference between like rollerblades and inline hockey skates. So for one, they don't have brakes. See, there's like nowhere to put a brake here. Uh, so no brakes on inline hockey skates uh, is one tell. Another one is, see how these back wheels are bigger than the front wheels? It lets them turn easier. Uh, and so for instance, these, you see the chassis says high low 8072, that means the back wheels are 80 millimeters, the front wheels are 72 millimeters. Um, this particular pair, um, they've got white laces on that and black laces on this. Not really a big deal. Um, I doubt they came that way, but it's not a huge issue. A couple things you want to look for with these. So this back part here, it's kind of like a, like a calf brace a little bit. These break a lot like um, a lot of the ones I see there's they break right here these are just barely starting to tear a little bit but not bad they're still pretty structurally sound uh, so they're they're not in bad shape but yeah you always want to kind of feel the boot make sure they're in okay condition you know make sure that, that like there's no cracks or anything in the chassis but yeah these are in okay okay condition not bad new these skates are like 150 bucks they're really really expensive um, I only paid three dollars for them I think I can probably get 40 or 50 bucks for them got this cool magnifier at a yard sale a week or two ago Topaz by Freedom Scientific unfortunately the monitors pretty scratched up um, I don't know if these are replaceable or what, but it's pretty cool. I powered it on and it came on fine. The comps on these things are crazy, like $300, $400, but i got to test it pretty good to make sure it works. I'm not really sure what all these buttons do, but I'm about to find out. All right, so that light works, and then I think this turns on the monitor, or actually maybe this button does. This thing is dusty. pretty cool it just blows that thing right up I guess that's what changes the zoom here 
we'll put something smaller on there. So, it's black and white. I wonder if it's supposed to be black and white or if it's supposed to be color. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it is. There's the color. Very cool. Yeah, this thing's pretty neat. And you can, like, draw on it or something, I guess. I don't know what that does. A little red light. Yeah, this thing's pretty neat. I'd really rather sell it local, to be honest. Because shipping this thing will be a pain in the butt. Because it is really heavy. And I'll have to take this whole back thing off. and I'll ship it if I have to, but I really don't want to. So I've got that magnifier listed. Um, and I took a short video of it. I want to embed it, but I cannot remember how to embed videos into eBay listings. So... I'm going to get some help from my good friend Lonnie. Include a video demo for, since it is electronic and mechanical and all that. Uh, it really increases customer confidence if you can add a video to your listing. So, uh, you cannot add a video directly to the listing anymore. You can't embed the video. Uh... It's, it's amazing that it's 2018 and eBay has not figured out a way for you to add video to a listing easily. It's just crazy. Um, but Lonnie's made a couple videos on this, so I will put a link to his video in the description of this video. I decided to start a listing challenge in the Facebook group for This Week in Reselling. I did it yesterday, and I'm going to do it every day of the, of, the, of the week, not the weekends. But just kind of something to keep me accountable, keep other people accountable. Because when you're working solo, uh, you know, you've only got to answer to yourself. Crosley's digging through the bag. What would you find in there, buddy? So basically the idea is to post how many items I think I'll list and then have everybody do the same. So yesterday I said my goal was 40 listings and I met it. Did 40 listings for 11 to 58. Uh, today my goal is also 40. I've got 10 knocked out so far. Uh, but if you guys want to join in on the listing challenge, just go to the Facebook group for This Week in Reselling. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And uh, every weekday I'll put a posting in there for the challenge. So. Hope you join me. I'm at my storage unit picking a couple things up. I got a bicycle and two baby gates that I'm selling locally. I'm meeting them all at the same spot, just like one after another. Uh, the bicycle I actually got from the trash. Somebody threw it away like at the end of their driveway. And the baby gates I got for five bucks a piece at yard sales. <laughs> I've sold a ton of these gates through the years. They're six panels and they're expandable. I sell them as quick as I can get them because there's so many people with kids and pets and different things. Um, I never pay more than like 10 bucks for them, but I always sell them for 20, 25 bucks because the new, I think they're around 60. How's it going? What's that? Oh, no kidding. Small world. Yeah. I think I get five dollars. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Let's try to go to the back end first. <laughs> this definitely qualifies as one of the weirdest things I've ever bought it's a sanborn viso cardiette apparently it's an old ekg machine from like the 40s i paid 20 bucks for it i'm thinking i might get 60 or 70 and i have no earthly idea how to test this thing dated 1949 ama minimum requirements are 40 cycles and 0 0.012 seconds it's cool, I know that, but yeah, just got to sell this thing as is. Probably not even safe to test it. Well, I didn't hit my goal today, but I got awfully close. I got 35 listings 
for $1,485. So I'm going to put that on the board. I've also been tracking previous weeks. So the last two weeks, uh, what I've done and the numbers and everything. So I should blow those out of the water this week. Um, I've got a lady coming to buy some of my geodes that I picked up in Kentucky. So I'm going to go upstairs and kind of organize those in the garage because they're just in a big heap of a pile right now. It's a big mess. All right, got all those things moved. That was a workout. And the lady came and bought three of them for 10 bucks. So if I sell all of them at that price, I should make four or $500 on those rocks. Not too shabby. What's up guys, it's Wednesday morning and I'm at my storage unit. Got a bunch of stuff in there I need to list on eBay. And I'm actually gonna do a flea market on Saturday. So I need to clean this storage unit up and get rid of a bunch of stuff. I got a lot of things that just aren't really a good fit for eBay. They're not really a good fit for the website, you know. Stuff that's worth like five bucks or less. That I really just need to blow out and get rid of. As you can see, this place is just a mess. I gotta clear a bunch of this stuff out. This bag right here I'm gonna bring home today. That's a lot of smalls I got at one spot. Like tools and different things that are all new that uh, should do pretty well. But yeah, just a bunch of stuff. Hopefully I can get rid of a lot of it Saturday. So I bought this big bag of stuff, gosh, like two months ago at a yard sale. Um, the guy was a sales rep for a lot of different companies and he had a lot of new new stock of stuff. This thing weighs a ton. I bet it weighs 100 pounds. The bag still has the tags. I paid five bucks for the bag. It's actually a pretty durable bag too. Arsenal, I think it's for like, you know, tools and different stuff but I have mostly forgotten what is in here because it's been sitting in storage for so long so we're about to find out together alright here is a diamond blade I remember bundling all this stuff together. I think I ended up paying about a hundred bucks or so. Here is some pants it looks like. Westex pants. Work pants or something. Here's some kind of like hazmat suit thing. Oh, these are always good. Some fire alarms. Got a bunch of tape from the guy. Um, here's another hazmat suit. There's another blade carbide. Uh, whatever this thing is, Jammer Co. Hammer drive fastening tool. A lot of this is dirty. I'm gonna need to clean it up. Here's some more tape. Another fastening tool. Pretty killer hammer. Here is a winter liner. Another thing from that company. Back supports. Some box cutters. These I'll probably just hang on to. Mm, a water bottle pouch. Here's some marine tie-down ratchets. Some more ratchets. Oh yeah, glasses. I got a bunch of these glasses. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have put those at the bottom with all this heavy stuff. A bunch of these. Give it a good sniff, buddy. Some nice tape measures. Some of this stuff I'm just gonna keep in my workshop. 
another tie down. More glasses. Here's some more blades. ITK contractor. Seven and a quarter inch. More tape, and then I've got more stuff on the side here. I've got a little bit more in storage still that didn't fit in this bag. More tape. Oh, I remember these. These are, um, open this box. Yeah, these are like all new in the box. Fly catchers. I need to hang some of these outside my house because we get so many flies. More tape. Man, I got a lot of tape from this guy. Glad I dug this out because I'm actually running low on tape. I got a couple tape guns too. Those are always good to have some extra tape guns. Oh, yeah. So these here Super Lube Synthetic Grease. I've got 12 of those. Another knife. Couple more tape measures because I always seem to be losing tape measures. Extension cords, yeah, these are coming handy. Good lord, how many tape measures did I get from this guy? Here is Super Lube, uh, synthetic based. There's probably 20 of them in here. and more tape. That is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.